Welcome to Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. Planting the seed of truth and growing families in the Word of God. Take courage. I don't know if we'll get through with it tonight or not because I have a lot of pages of notes. God started showing me some things this morning and it turned into not tonight's message. So, you ready? Anybody use a little courage along the way? Me too. Many times you'll find in the scripture, many times, you'll hear God command his people to be courageous, to be strong and courageous. Y'all have heard that one a lot because of Joshua. We'll be going there tonight. But let's be honest, we don't always feel courageous. Sometimes we lose heart and we kind of lose our strength and he has to get us encouraged and get us back up. So if he commands us to be courageous, it has to be possible. And he would be an unjust God if he commanded us to be courageous and to be strong and it wasn't possible. So if you're going to take courage and you don't have it, where are you going to get it? <laughs> How are you going to get it? And that's tonight's message. So God broke it down to me to four Ps. Four Ps. Promise, prayer, praise, and people. Don't worry about writing it all down because we'll go through each one of them. But promise, prayer, praise, and people. Where are you going to get courage if you don't have any? Number one, the promise. This, this one should come as no surprise to this church that the number one place we're going to get our courage from is from the promise, from the Word of God, from what God said to you. If God told you to do something, build something, go to school for something, um, then that's His Word to you. And if not, then you've got promises in the Bible that you hold in your lap, promises that should encourage you and give you the courage to walk out what they say. We know from Romans 10, 17 that faith... The ability to believe comes from hearing the word. So if I'm going to take courage and I don't have any in a situation, I'm going to the word. Right. I'm going to the promise. I'm going to go to his word to me, and that's got to be at the forefront of my mind, and that's what's going to give me courage to walk it out. There's so many biblical accounts <laughs> Of, I mean, actually, from Genesis to Revelation, the whole thing is about people taking what God said and being courageous with it. That's what it is. That's what faith does. It takes what God said, and, and they become courageous with it. And they get out of their comfort zone. They have to get out of their comfort zone. You can't be courageous sitting in your comfort zone. It doesn't take any courage to stay in your comfort zone where you are. It takes courage to move out from where you are. And I was thinking about Abraham the father of our faith, and how courageous he was. You know, God looked at him and said, I want you to leave. Leave everything you've known. Take your kids, take your, I mean, take your wife and your servants, and walk out the door. Uh, where am I going? To a place I'll show you. Now, that's just, I'm glad God didn't do that to me. <laughs> I like a schedule, you know. Can you tell me what time I'll arrive? He didn't give him that. Abraham, or Abram at the time, stepped out that door with the word of God that said, I want you to leave here. I want you to leave your family, your father's house behind, and go where I show you. That's pretty courageous. Noah goodness. I'm glad God didn't ask me for this one either. Spent most of his life building a boat in the middle of a place where they had never seen rain. It's pretty courageous. Where did that courage come from? It came from one place. He didn't have the people that we're going to get to at number four. He had the promise. He had, he had God's word to him Build the ark and it'll save your family. That's what he had. That's all he had. That was enough to give him courage. Anybody remember how many years he worked on the ark? 120? That's courage every day. You've got you to keep that up. That courage has to be maintained. Esther stood before the king. 
could have killed her. Yeah. Courage. Courage. Moses. Where can we even go with Moses? I mean, from the beginning of his life to the end. Showdown after showdown with the enemy, with Pharaoh. He couldn't even talk right, and yet God chose him to go speak before Pharaoh and have a showdown with Pharaoh, have a showdown with the magicians. All these things that took place. Courage. Where, did, where does courage come from? It didn't come from anywhere else but God's words. God told him what to do. God had to, God had to encourage him. But God did. And he walked in at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Stood. Sometimes it just takes courage to stand. But they wouldn't bow. They wouldn't bow. Why? Stood on the word. We won't even start listing the prophets. You can't be a prophet and not have courage. <laughs> prophets were the most bold, and they had to speak for God, and a lot of times what they had to say for God was not popular. So you go back and you study the prophets. What did they have? God's word. What God said to them, and they couldn't even go read it. It's what they heard from God. It's what the Spirit would show them when he would come on them and anoint them to do something. That's all they had. We at least have the written word. We can go back and reread. We can put it on our light switches as we talked about Sunday. We can go and we can listen to it online. You can listen to it on your phone. These guys had what they heard, what they heard from God. 1 Samuel 30 and verse 6, you don't have to turn there. It's one sentence, but I think it's important. It says, David encouraged himself in the Lord. And that, that's a short sentence we pulled out of context, but the context was this. All his people, their kids and wives had just got slaughtered. That makes that sentence mean a whole lot, doesn't it? He's the leader. And his people just got slaughtered. His wife and children were taken. And David encouraged himself in the Lord. He had to go back to everything God had said to him. Mary, I read about Rahab today. I read about Paul today. The disciples. Gideon, courageous. Yep, God said so, didn't he, Miss Marilyn? The Spirit of the Lord approached Gideon. He was threshing wheat. You can turn there. We're going to go to Judges 6. He was threshing wheat in the wine press. He was hiding from the Midianites, hiding the food from them. They had taken over, and uh, God called him a mighty man of valor. Called him out to courage. Judges 6. We're going to start reading in verse 12. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. King James Version said, mighty man of valor. You mighty warrior. Now, I want you to listen to this mighty warrior, okay? Because we're talking about us being courageous. We don't need to sound like this. <laughs> but sir, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our fathers told us about when... They did not bring us up when, when they brought us up out of Egypt. But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hand of the Midians. The Lord turned to him. I bet he did. <laughs> He's fixing to encourage him. And he said, go in the strength you have. Now I had to think about that. And I honestly went to several commentaries going, I'm not hearing strength here in Gideon. I mean, God, why did this happen? And why did you leave us here? And, and, and he, the Spirit of the Lord turns to him and says, Go in the strength you have. And Adam Clark, I think it was, uh, in his commentary said this, and I thought it was really good. Y'all can meditate on this, and if you get something good out of it, you can email me and let me know. But he said, when the Spirit turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have, the strength he had was the word he had been given. This is what you got, big boy. What I tell you, that's what you've got. Now you go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? 
That's what you got right there. Did I not tell you to start this business? Did I not tell you to move there? Did I not tell you? Oh, we ain't talking about moving. You get me on, in the flesh. We don't want her to move, do we? But he's looking at Gideon. He's saying, Did I not, am I not the one sending you? He's putting courage in him. But Lord, <laughs> sometimes you just have to laugh when you read Gideon. How can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my family. He's not getting it yet. We need some more encouragement. The Lord answered, and he said, I'll be with you. And you will strike down all the Midianites together. This is what he had. This is the strength he had. He had the word of the Lord, that the Lord would be with him, and that he would strike down all the Midianites together. And we'll stop there. It's a great story, and, and you should read more of it, because it's, it's really a good study. But begin, uh, Gideon begins at that point to obey what the Spirit of the Lord tells him to do. He goes through a process of different things that he tells him to do that give him strength and enable him to be able to see success in his own mind. And Gideon and his army defeated the Midianites with broken clay pots with fire inside them. Anybody see any type and shadow in that? With broken clay pots with a fire inside them. To be courageous, sometimes you just got to get the flesh out of the way and live out of the inside fire. It's a type of you with the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, and that's how they defeated the enemy. That's a side, that's a side message. Psalm 119. Forget I have to give you time to turn there because I don't give you notes on Wednesday nights. I'm going to be reading out of the Amplified. Psalm 119, verse 28. My life dissolves and weeps itself away for heaviness. Raise me up and strengthen me according to the promises of your word. Where is this courage going to come from? Where is this strength going to come from? Raise me up and strengthen me according to the promises of your word. What does his word say about me? What was his word to me? That should raise me up and that should strengthen me. Remove from me the way of falsehood and unfaithfulness to you and graciously impart your law to me. I have chosen the way of truth and faithfulness. Your ordinances, that's what I have set before me. So I cleave to your testimonies. Lord, do not put me to shame. I will not merely walk but run. I will run the way of your commandments when you give me a heart that is willing. Where are you going to get courage when you are discouraged? You're going to set his ordinance, his word before you, and you will choose it. There's several things in this passage I think are, are key. They will strengthen you. They'll raise you up. And you will run the way of his commandments. You will run the way of his word when you get a heart that is willing. Now, there's several scriptures, and I don't even know that I put them in my notes. I did. I wasn't to it yet, but I'm going to go there. Psalm 27, and there, there's another one. I can't remember where it was in the book of Psalm. Uh, but verse 14, Psalm 27, 14, it says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will strengthen thy heart. He says, be of good courage, and I will strengthen your heart. Be of good courage, and I will strengthen your heart. It's kind of like step out the door, and I'll give you strength for the journey. Yes. You know, sometimes courage is a matter of choosing. I, I don't know how, Father. I don't know. All I know is this is what you showed me to do. This is what you told me to do. And that courage is saying, I'm going to do it. And then he strengthens your heart. But there's two, two, different verse, uh, two different places in Psalm where he says basically the same thing. Take courage, 
and I'll strengthen your heart. But take courage is my part. Giving me strength for it is his part. But take courage, that's my part. Take it. Take courage. If you don't have any, you're going to have to get it from the Word. That's one of the places, well, that's, that's always going to, everything's going to go back to the Word. To his promise. Go with me to Joshua chapter 1. And you know, when you're, when you're studying being courageous, please go to Hebrews 11 and read the Hall of Faith. Read about the people that God wanted recorded in the Hall of Faith in Hebrews 11. And look at what gave them strength. Go back to their stories and see what gave them strength and what made them so courageous. I guess I better turn there, hadn't I? Joshua 1. One of my dad's favorite passages. I'm going to start reading in verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, Thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness of the Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, that shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. Hmm. Strong is an option. It's an option for you. It's available to you. If you're like me, I don't like to feel weak. I don't like to feel vulnerable. I mean to the hands of the enemy. I'm not talking about to God. I don't, I don't like to feel weak and vulnerable. But God gives us a choice of strength and of courage, and he gives this choice. Well, let me say that. Let me rephrase that. He's taking away his choices. Be strong. You know what that means? Don't be weak. You've got an option here. But I'm telling you which one you're going to pick. Kind of like he says, I put before you life and death, therefore choose life. <laughs> he says you've got a choice, but choose life. You've got a choice between weakness and strength, between discouragement and courage. Be strong and be courageous. Be of good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only. Now he's making it real plain. Now there's really only one option. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Don't turn from it from the right hand or to the left. That thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Here's the one we all know. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein, and then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. What he's saying, you better keep this word in front of you. But keep this word in front of you. You don't look to, to any side, but you keep the word in your mouth, and you keep it in front of your eyes. That's how you're going to have success, and that's how you're going you're to prosper. Verse 9, Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. <laughs> you think he can make it any plainer here? For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now this word dismayed, when I looked it up, it meant you cannot be discouraged, dismayed, and it meant broken down by violence, confusion, or fear. 
He was commanding him not to let discouragement, fear, and confusion break him down. He knew he was going to have every opportunity. He was taking the leadership role of Moses. You know, rods, serpents, waters parting, water coming from rock. Might be a little bit of room. And plus, Joshua is one of the ones that watched these people nearly kill Moses on more than one occasion because they didn't like his leadership. And God's just given him the great position. Don't get discouraged. Don't you allow fear. Don't you get broken down by confusion, by fear. Don't become dismayed. Those were the orders that he gave him. I said this to Tanya today. I don't know if you ever got this on the internet or not, but discouragement feeds the enemy. It feeds him. Discouragement feeds the enemy. It gives him momentum. So we've got to take courage, and we've also got to encourage others. Because discouragement is dangerous. We just can't allow it. And every one of us has been in a place of discouragement. What that means is without courage. The only other time, the only word I could find where it actually used the word discourage in Scripture was from Numbers 32, 7. You don't have to turn there. I'm just going to refer to it. But Numbers 32, 7 uses the word discourage. And when you look it up in the Strong's, you know what it means? To make of none effect. That's what discourage means. It takes away your courage, therefore it makes you of no effect. No wonder the enemy wants you discouraged. Discouraged in your marriage means that you're of no effect in your marriage. Discouraged on your job means that you're of no effect on your job. Discouraged in the church means that you're of no effect in your church. Discourage. That's an ugly word. Let's fight it. Let's fight it with courage. If God said it, let's be courageous in it. If God said it, let's be courageous in it. And take courage from the promise. We have time to get... Yes, we do. Let's go to number two. Second P. First one, get your courage from your promise. Second one, prayer. I know it sounds real simple. But sometimes we forget. Courage will come from time spent with God. I'm telling you, there's something about His presence. And there's something about realizing that you're talking to God Almighty who happens to be your father, that'll put courage on the inside of you. We read this a while ago, but Psalm 27, 14. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And when you look at that word wait up, it means to bind with, to, to twist with, or to, to bond with him. That's what your time with him does. And the, you know, the devil's always attacking prayer. Because it's so powerful, it encourages us so much that we can go to God and we can talk to Him and He can talk to us. I guarantee you, if we're discouraged, we're either not talking to Him or not listening to Him or both. Because if He's talking to you, He's encouraging you. And that, that word is, was number one, the promise, what He's promised you, that's what we all have to stand on. And it's going to come from time spent with him. I was seeking the Lord this week. I needed some answers. And, and you know, all I did was just say, God, I need revelation. I need revelation. Do you know by the next morning, my whole world changed? Right here. He gave me, he gave me two things. And you know what? That gave me courage. And discouragement had to leave because I had God's word on it. Talk to him. If you're discouraged, talk to him. Let him encourage you with his words. I promise you, you will come out encouraged. 
you know, there was an attack on Daniel because of his prayer life. And there was a lot of reasons they didn't like him, but that, that's the area that they attacked him. And I thought, when I was looking at that today, when, you know, talking about the prayer version of this, I thought, God, why did they attack his prayer? I mean, there's lots of things they didn't like about him, but they went after his prayer. But his courage for everything else came from his time of prayer. And so if they could cut off his time of prayer, they could cut off his favor. They could cut off his strength. They could cut everything off. They, want, they didn't want him up as high as he was in the kingdom. If they cut off his prayer life, he wouldn't be. So they went after his prayer. And I want to read this to you from Daniel 6. Because Daniel refused to stop. In Daniel 6, verse 10, and you can read the whole story. It's a great lesson. It says, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, the law that they had passed, in case you don't know, the law that they had passed, that if anybody prayed or worshipped anybody other than the king, then they were going to the lion's den. They, they were tricking the king. But he went into his house. When he knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open. courage. And, and Jamie, this wasn't a show of rebellion. Oh, they signed that. I'm going to fling open the windows. The, the scripture plainly tells us here. He says, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day, and he prayed. And he gave thanks before his God, as he did aforetime. Just like he'd always done. Even though the law was passed, he could go into the lion's den. His courage came from that prayer time. So he didn't give up that prayer time. He did it just like he did any other time. Windows open, facing Jerusalem, on his knees, three times a day. Courage. And of course, everything worked out for his good. So if you need courage, take time to pray. Take the time to pray. It's your red phone. <laughs> Young kids will not have a clue what I'm talking about. It's your direct line. To God and you can talk to him and he can talk to you it's your connection to the Almighty well you're talking about giving you courage when you've been with God you'll have courage Isaiah 40 verse 31 reading out the amplified it says but those who wait binding bonding twisting together with the Lord who expect look for and hope in him shall change and renew their strength. Change and renew their strength and power. They shall lift their wings and mount up close to God as eagles. As eagles mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint or become tired. I need that. You need that. And it all comes from time with the Lord. You know, the prayer puts the two of you together. Prayer puts you with God. Now, if you need courage, Antonio, can I pick on you? I'm going to ask permission because you're bigger than me. Would you mind standing up? You know you're always my example. Although those girls are getting tall enough, I can probably use them. I'll just stand up. I'll look like I have a gang. Here we go. Come on. Let me look, let me look good. I know, right? Who's going to mess with me? These are my people. This gives me courage. Even in the natural. If anybody was messing with me and Antonio knew about it, he could just walk behind me. You know, I can stand out here alone or I can walk with Anton Antonio. Thank you. Prayer puts us with God. If I need courage, as much courage as it would give me to walk with these three, and they would fight for me, don't, don't mess with me. Right? Maybe, okay. As much courage as that. There's something encouraging about not being alone. And prayer puts me with God. I didn't lay my notes down, did I, brother? Prayer puts me with God. Don't fight this thing along. 
Don't feel alone. There's, there's a, a comfort in numbers. And you've got God. And prayer will put you two together. Jude 20. You've got to go here when we're talking about prayer. Jude 20. Jude does not have chapters, so don't, don't panic. It's Jude, verse 20. Did y'all find Jude? It's little. Ready? But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. You know, prayer, talking to God, listening to God. But praying in the Spirit. I, if you're discouraged, you know, there's been times that I've been discouraged to the point of not having words. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need to open my mouth right now. <laughs> anybody, know, anybody know what I mean? I don't need to open my mouth right now. I don't even know how to articulate what needs to be said at this moment. And you can break over and pray in your prayer language. Pray in the Holy Spirit. And that is, once again, that red line. You know, it, it surpasses your mind, which you need surpassed when you're discouraged. And it won't be long after praying in the Spirit that you'll start praying in English because that comfort and that strength and that encouragement that you're building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, and then English words will start coming to you because they were given to you by the Holy Spirit. And you'll find yourself praying things and saying things that you couldn't have said 15 minutes before. This is invaluable if you're discouraged. Please, please, if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Mom, would you raise your hand so they know who you are? Come talk to Mom after service. I'm telling you, she can pray with you. You'll be speaking in tongues within five minutes. You'll have the greatest tool against discouragement. Not only is it that direct communication and, and how he could drop things in your spirit that way, but there's something about when you pray in tongues that you realize the Holy Spirit of the living God dwells on the inside of me. That is courage. You know, when people, after the upper room experience and people got filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter, who had just got through denying Christ three times, got up with boldness and preached to the whole city? What happened? Courage. Where'd it come from? Prayer. Praying in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit had come in those guys. And that is not a different Holy Spirit than what you have on the inside of you tonight. It is the same. And when people talk about Holy Ghost boldness, I believe it. The Holy Spirit literally changed these guys into courageous and bold. I mean, against death, against the constant threat of death. It's a powerful tool. And if you're discouraged, I encourage you to take courage by taking time to pray, and especially praying in the Holy Spirit. I think we might have time to get another one in. Tom's looking at me, not answering. The third one. Karen gave me permission. That's, that's his wife. Praise. The third P. Praise. Now I'm really going to have turkeys. You know I've got to get the fourth one in. It's not enough for a whole service next week. Praise. Praise. It will encourage you. Why? Because what it does is it magnifies God and shrinks your problem. Praise gets your mind on God and gets it off of ourselves. Praise is the sound of a victory. Praise is the sound of success. In 2 Chronicles, and you can turn there, another great story. Please read the whole thing because there's, there's just so much in here. But 2 Chronicles chapter 20, Jehoshaphat is, they're, they're under attack. And 
I like this story because if you go back and you read the whole thing, you can, you can read all four of these P's in there. Uh, it, but he's, he prays. He prays. He goes, talks to God. He says, what do I do? And he receives a promise. He receives a word from the Lord. So that one's in there too. He receives a promise about the battle and he receives instructions from God. And that instruction for, from God, a big part of it was to praise so in 2 Chronicles, did I give you time to get there? Chapter 20. Thank goodness for those little tabs on the side of the Bibles, right? Verse 21. We're just jumping in the middle here. It says, And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of his holiness. We're at war. Okay? We're at war. This is gruesome war. This isn't people with, with long-range rifles here. This is gruesome war that these people lived in. That's what they're facing, and, and they're going to sing about the beauty of holiness. And you just remember that the next time you feel like you're under attack. They began to sing about the beauty of holiness. It says, And as they went out before the army sent the singers out before the army. You know why? Because the victory was going out before the fight. And that's the way we should do things as well. I love that song we sing. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battle. As they went out before the army, and this is, and he told them to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Here's your song, boys. This is what we're going to sing. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Done. Done. But they, they began to praise the beauty of holiness. They began to sing. They went out before the army. And, you know, I, I just tried to picture this today. And I thought, what this must have looked like. Okay, just imagine that, that you're the enemy. You're coming out to war against all of us people up here. And we're over here singing about the beauty of holiness. What you hear coming from our camp is about how beautiful the Lord is and how amazing God is and how holy God is and how his mercy endures forever. That has to be a wee bit confusing. And you'll see God use this tactic several times in Scripture where he'll have them praise in the time of war. We saw it with the walls of Jericho, the sound of the trumpet, the shofar, Antonio. How confusing. It always confuses the enemy. The enemy can't figure it out because the, the praise declares a victory and they haven't even fought you yet. And you're already praising. Still confuses the enemy. He still doesn't know what's going on when he hears you praise because praise is courageous. Fear doesn't praise. Faith praises. Faith, praise is courageous. It makes declarations and it encourages us. And God really started dealing with me when I was looking at this uh, today about God giving you a song. And Kathy, or Kathy, you sent me that song and you said this was my song when you went through the battle with cancer. This was my song. Many of you, the Lord has given you a song, whether it's one that you wrote on the inside. I have one that came from my insides. And I, I, don't, I don't have it written down. I tried to write part of it down today, but it only comes to me at certain times. And when it comes to me, I can sing it. And I sit back there and try to think of the words tonight and couldn't think of them. I can tell you that lots of times in the song, it says, I will trust you. So if you're discouraged, use praise. 
And if that's a song that you hear that ministers to you, or if in a time of prayer, and that's usually when your song will come, if he gives you a song, it'll come during a time of, of prayer with him. And he'll put words in your mouth and you'll begin to sing. Begin to sing in the Spirit. And then a lot of times words will come in English that'll be a song that's for you. And that's for somebody tonight. Psalm 40 and verse 3. I'm reading out of the Amplified. Psalm 40 and verse 3. He's, it says, And he has put a new song in my mouth. A song of praise to our God. Many shall see and fear. And put their trust and confidence and reliance in the Lord. From what? From your song. How are they going to see your song? From your courage. They'll see and fear, that means revere and worship, and put their trust and confidence and reliance in the Lord. Man, use your song. Use your tool of praise. God gave songs to Moses and to Israel. You can, you can go back and read it. God gave songs to Moses. He told him what to write. And he told him before he died to make sure that the Israelites knew the song. Because they were going to need it generations down the road. I sing songs over my babies. Songs stay with people. And even when they can't think because of the stresses that are on them, they can remember a song. It's a powerful tool. If you need courage, take praise. It will encourage you. Let's get the last one in here. People. One of the most powerful tools of God and one of the most powerful tools of the enemy. One of the most powerful tools of God to encourage. One of the most powerful tools of the enemy to discourage. We've got to be careful. We can see the power of discouragement through words. I, I went back to Numbers 13 and 14. You remember when uh, they sent the spies into the promised land? They had the promise from God that the land was theirs, but they sent spies in to see, you know, what it was really like. And you remember they sent a, a spy from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. And two came back, Joshua and Caleb came back, and they said, Oh, man, this is a great place. But there was a problem. Because they came, the, uh, the other 10 came back to the people of Israel and said, I mean, I, there's a list like this long. Yes, yes, it is good, like Joshua and Caleb said, but let me tell you, when you're talking to somebody and you need courage, and they use the word B-U-T, but, run. I know God said that, but you better close your ears because you're fixing to get some discouragement thrown your way. And I believe that when we are we're working on our courage. We've been in a place of discouragement. We need to be real careful who we surround ourselves with. But in, in Numbers 13, I'll just read a little bit to you, to you here from uh, starting in verse 30. It says, Caleb stilled the people. Joshua and Caleb were the believers. Stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it. We're well able to overcome it. But that men that went up with him said, we can't go up against these people. They're stronger than we are. They brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched into the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come from the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight discouragement and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried and the people wept that night two voices one with the promise one with discouragement discouraged by people if you need to take courage take courageous people with you 
If you need to take courage, then you take courage. This is why it's so important, this body of Christ and this body of believers, and that we fellowship with the household of faith. I will witness to those that are not. And we'll be a strength and an encourager to those that are not. But if you're discouraged, take the people with you who are of like and precious faith, who will put you back on the promise. Caleb and Joshua would go on to lead the next generation after everybody that was 20 and above died off. Then these two old men who held on to the promise. What was Caleb, 85? When they decided to go in and take it with the younger generation, he said, give me the mountain where the giants are. Where did that courage come from? Here's these younger guys that have grown up, that they've trained up to go into the promised land. Why are we not sending that young troop in there? I'll tell you why. Because the courage came from the promise. And they're the ones that received the promise. And he said, give me the mountain where the giants are. I love that. Acts 28, verse 15. I've got to hurry because Tom's giving me signals. Acts 28, 15, now the Amplified says, And the Christian brethren there, having had news of us, this is Paul, came as far as the forum of Apias and the three taverns to meet us. And when Paul saw them, he thanked God and he received new courage. Paul was a prisoner. They were, they were taking him to Rome, his guard and himself, and they were taking him to Rome. But before they could get to Rome, this was 56 miles outside of Rome. Here comes these believers, and when he saw them, he found new courage. This is the beauty of the body of Christ. Why did he find courage? Because these guys went out of their way to be an encouragement. They weren't waiting for him to get to Rome. They went 56 miles. That's not in a Toyota. To encourage the Apostle Paul. And it gave him new courage. I love that. He found new courage because they went out of their way. We need to go out of our way to encourage people. Man, when somebody's in a long fight, don't you forget. Don't forget. Tanya and I will we'll have different people that we're you know, encouraging, and I'll say, hey, have you talked to this week? You know, oh, no, okay, I, I will, or you will, or because we can't forget to put courage in people that are in a fight. Hebrews 10, verse 24, out of the Amplified, it says, and let us consider and give attentive, continuous care to watching over one another, studying how we may stir up stimulate and incite to love and helpful deeds and noble activities, not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as believers, as the habit of some people, but admonishing, warning, urging, and encouraging one another, and all the more faithfully as we see the day approaching. I'm telling you, if you need courage, take encouraging people. Take courageous people with you. And if you need encouragement, I can send you some help. We've got some people in here that can speak the word into your life. Don't sit and be alone. I don't always know what you're going through. The person sitting next to you on the pew doesn't always know what you're going through. But I guarantee you anybody in here is willing to encourage you. You won't get a but here. We will say the word, and we'll encourage you to stay on the word. That's what we're here for. If you need courage, you need the promise, prayer, praise, and people. And then I kind of threw a fifth one in, and then protect. Protect your courage. Protect the word that God has given you, because your courage is going to come from it. We need to protect it. Amen. Y'all can stand. This has been Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. We pray that this message has uplifted, encouraged, and motivated you today. You can find us online at rccenter.org or visit us at 305 Lakefront Drive, Russellville, Arkansas.